Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Rise of the Robots campaign where we're trying to beat the game with only Sparks and Psy active characters, of course on Legendary Iron Man with permanent dark events. It is time for Operation Moon Saga where we're trying to get more supplies and intel. Between the last mission and this mission there has really not much noticeable happened. We finished the covert ops and that's pretty much it. We started to scan for Illyrium and Alien Alloy. So you didn't miss anything. Here however, oh yeah, and the Shadow Chamber finished. So now we can see what we're up against. 11 uh, targets, got Archons uh, that are now coming in just like Andromedons. So we're seeing a bit heavier enemies. On the same note, let's take a look if we can upgrade our big fat weapons. Hey, we probably cannot yet. So weapons. This is what I would want for the sparks. 250 supplies. The rest is available. Now core question can we get 70 supplies we probably can because i would love to see sparks with plasma weapons going after aliens that seem to have more and more hit points that's a good part about sparks as well since the game normally assumes you're only having like one it prizes all of the updates accordingly so it thinks you know what uh, they will probably only have one spark and you're paying relatively speaking low costs for all of those upgrades spectre corpse yes advent corpse yes mech corpse yes you know what probably need to sell all of those andromedon yeah we're going to get a new one in the next mission we I hate selling superior items, but we're probably not requiring a superior laser sight. 15% crit is cool and all, but but I don't know. Advanced laser sight certainly can go. So that's 250 right there. Perfect. What can I do for you, Commander? All right, maybe a bit long-winded start. But the Illyrium face cannons are certainly worth it. So now let's jump into the mission, guys, and see how our sparks are performing. We gotta rescue an, a VIP. You already know that that will be a time uh, timely mission. So having that extra firepower really will help us to excel. It's by the way fantastic to see that with the sparks you are not forced to uh, shift enemies um, or uh, soldiers around all the time matter of fact you can just run the uh, run them back to back to back and that's pretty much what we're doing so who's going to be our last lucky winner of today you know what maybe we're giving it to russ russ hasn't been with us for a while make weapons available yes please make items available we still got the the unique armor here for renman and i would like to see blue screen rounds and a pretty decent weapon roby on the other hand goes with blue screen rounds and the mimic beacon plus an instant kill weapon and Russ goes with a mimic beacon blue screen rounds and nah let's take that one okay cool now that we figured that out let's take a look at our ultra big guns in doom there is uh, such a, th a, th a thing as the bfg big effing gun i don't know if i'm even allowed to say that on youtube but who cares so that's the bfg for our sparks and boy oh boy that gi that gives you an itchy trigger finger just by looking at it holy shit the gun is half half of the size of the robot if it wouldn't be for just fantasy purposes 
that would be incredibly ridiculous. Why would you need such a large gun? But there is no such thing as too large when it comes to guns and robots. This is the Rise of the Robots campaign, guys. Let's jump right into the mission. All right, we landed. Fantastic. Three angry large robots with massive guns. What can possibly go wrong? And I mentioned it already within these close corridors of a city the sparks truly begin to excel i mean look at that we can just jump down and immediately jump up seeing that that is the first enemy pack we got 12 rounds right there's one pack here one pack here we got 11 enemies overall. I'm not terribly afraid of either of these guys, to be honest. Just trying to see where a good high ground is. This here definitely would work well. And in the meantime, we can just take this here as a high ground for now. See, this here will now come in handy because he has the Hunter upgrade. 33% chance of randomly taking a shot. Russ is uh, going to move and sort of keeps the back line. And Renvin, oh boy, we got domination. I forgot about that. I think we're going to play around with domination. I, I feel like being a bit cheeky today. Having a stun lancer and a captain just for fun, that would be hilarious. What's our chance to take them over? 50 50. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, the only one whom we can take over is the captain. You know what? Don't F it. Me. We're going to go and break concealment. Ah, didn't work out. Shot failed to be And that was the hunter trigger. Fantastic. Forty-four percent. Now nah, he's even less capable of doing it. But I, I really want the elite officer, to be honest. Okay, we're trying it again. It's a fifty-fifty. Come on, guys. There we go. Mind controlled. Unfortunately, also, maybe we've overdone that a bit. Hmm, good. Well, you know, we would, uh, we're going to do what every reasonable individual would do when they are faced with overwhelming odds. We're just going to blow shit up. And maybe hex something. Yeah, maybe not. Initiating remote interface. Good. We're going to go for overdrive. Let's get rid of their cover. This should also explode the car and thus divide all of these codices yep there we go make sure when you do that that you're not accidentally also killing the vip which would suck Ok, 
Okay, time for an overdrive. Oh, yeah. Very nice damage. I absolutely am approving it. Good. We got a deal mainly with the codices. We got a superior stock, so that's a hundred percent kill. Getting rid of the Lancer. Look, we got two more. We theoretically got another overdrive. Don't want to use that yet. But if we're using the Mimic Beacon, it might not be enough to absorb all of the shots. On the other hand, it may, might. Advancing. Let's pick up the loot here. Hair trigger and another advanced stock. That's okay. Ouch. So technically they would be forced to focus on the Mimic Beacon. The Codices don't have a strong attack, but he can crit pretty well. Yep. Yeah, so we're going to see one psionic bomb. It's not going to hurt us, but we gotta move. And that's what's annoying about it. Okay, no problem. So, we... Need to get out of here. How about... For instance, moving over here. Two to three points of damage, not enough to make sure that they die, uh, that they die a hundred percent. And we have Inspire, which allows us to take an extra turn. Okay, so. Um, how about we're moving up? Got that nice mind control going. And how about we're frag grenading? That's more like it. Cover removal and one of them down. Perfect. All right, Glaive essentially needs to move out Movement. thanks to the psionic bomb and we need to reload and that'll probably consume the entirety of the turn. Renvin needs to move out, but thanks to his Berserker armor, he can do that for free and smashing like the Hulk. Love it.
he hasn't he hasn't actually spent an action instead we can reload him for free and just because he's such a boss I was about to say we're using insanity but we're really not All right, moving up. Pretty good damage, I like it. Dagger is moving over here. And that's a solid kill. Good, Russ. Has blue screen rounds. Might as well take a shot. Very solid damage. And I think we got blue screen rounds as well. 100% shot. Roby reloads. And we've done pretty well so far. Oh, it was a free reload. Damn it. That autoloader saved us once again. Okay, so you remember the fire line. I hope at least you do. If you've seen my other videos, Proceed. we're going to build exactly that. Proceeding to target. Good. Let's use our explosives just to make sure that he does not have them anymore. Explosives also make noise and noise generally attracts advent. So that was not just killing a random civilian, totally. We're moving up. And we got that fire line going. Vector reloads. Dagger, reload, overwatch, glaive, overwatch. And Renvin gets another overwatch. Good. Moving up. And we're totally moving into the open. Good. This here should be in a quasi-direct line. Yep, it is. Just not hitting enough targets. Hmm, that's a bit disappointing. That's why I usually prefer the rocket launcher. The cone-like abilities are good, but the rocket launcher tends to hit more targets. Like this, for instance.
Can't hit all three, but we can hit at least two. Coincidentally, they were positioning themselves just so that you cannot hit all three. Codex begins to clone itself. Did the Spectre really just dodge this? Wow, well, okay. We could theoretically Void Rift. Let's see how far we could go all the way up to here, but that's not far enough. I want to reach all the targets, including the one in the back. Good. Let's continue with Vector here. Taking out the codices. It's one down. Russ simply moves up and starts at least hitting something. Good, perfect. Codex is gone. Very good. So, let's continue. Can't really reach this guy back there. The only thing that we can do is not to cluster up too far. I guess that'll be okay. I want to use the other mimic beacon yet. He would have um, gotten non-controlled very soon. That's another psionic bomb. Hitting three. Hitting three. Moving on target location. Russ is in a pretty good position to flank. Thanks to blue screen rounds, he managed to just shake that one off. Where do we need to go, by the way? Oh, up there. Okay, cool. Should have counted. I'm a bit tired uh, tonight, so... I could have just guessed that they would be there. Well, luckily for us, we still got our cooldowns ready. And lucky for us as well, we got more than enough. We got more than enough um, 
psi powers to deal with these guys. First of all, let's get them. away from the cover that was a good strategy we essentially just uh, destroyed the building so much so that it needed to replace the evac zone wasn't fully intentional but in hindsight I don't mind it either Seven percent shot, solidly missed. I'm, I'm trusting you here. It's okay. We're using the mimic beacon, just placing it here. That'll force both of them to come closer. He missed the Mimic Beacon. The 10 most uh, prominent signs that you suck. Number one, you miss the Mimic Beacon. Good, Dagger moves up. Let's give him a kill. Okay, first thing that I notice is this guy up there is way too much cover. Let's get that away. Very nice, good. Unfortunately, Archons can't fall to the ground. Good, we're reloaded. And ready to go. Time for an overdrive. Let's get this bird out of the sky. Wow, nice, I like it. He was our best chance to hit it. Unfortunately, Archons are pretty tanky mostly due to their uh, high dodge and high defense ability which just makes them a difficult to hit you always have kind of this 50 60 percent to hit unless of course when you do have a superior stock like we do in which case it's probably the counter against them funnily enough Yep, because you cannot dodge the 3 damage and Archons don't have armor. Good, moving on. We're going to take the VIP and then we're out of here. That's 11 enemies down. Smack him. Pick him up. And carry him out. Target 
hostage in custody. Headed there now. Movement engaged. All right, Clay Force moves out. Renman moves out. Roby moves out and Vector moves out. You know what's, what's cool? We got Inspire to give Russ that extra turn. Imagine it would be the last round and you just inspire him to go ever so slightly and he makes it. It is not the last round because we have pretty much uh, steamrolled the competition yet again with this uh, combination. But yeah, just imagine it. It uh, would have been a cool finish for the entire mission. Good, we got ourselves yet another flawless mission. A turns. It's fast when you blow everything up and then just begin to roll over them. The sparks are pretty strong. Good, we landed. Let's get a promotion, guys. I think we got no promotion. Well, yeah, those guys have seven missions already. Wow. And we got a hair trigger, advanced stock, a couple of codex brains. That's fine. But mainly 100 intel and 230 supplies. The 100 intel was much needed because now we can continue our world domination by spreading out the XCOM empire even more intel available before we do that let's slow down commander i appreciate you recruiting new staff for the engineering team but as it stands we have people still waiting for assignment we can have them working on construction good we got that one we got that one uh, engineer ready to go they just finished the shadow chamber so probably lost only half a day at max I don't like when the engineers are not all assigned. So that'll give us 13 uh, contacts, which is good. I think we cannot upgrade it any further. No, we cannot. And 13 is pretty good. It's almost enough. If not even enough, I think 13 should be enough for the entire world. Good, making contact here is 80 intel. You know, since it's instant, might as well do it. Yay. Making contact here is 160. That's not yay, that is nay. And we got almost enough intel to get all of Europe, which will give us the suit up ability and then we can Approach New India from uh, the other side. Let's just scan for one more intel and then we can close down Europe as well. Greatly increasing our income. There is now an ambush risk on all of the covert action missions. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I greatly approve that because we don't need any um, any ambushes for um, for leveling purposes anymore so it's just going to be like that pain in the neck making contact yes and we now got suit up all armor and vest projects are completed instantly not that we have a lot of armor projects but maybe that, i mean that gives us the option to theoretically build armor Immediately, I am contemplating if we want to, like, yeah, we don't want to do that yet because we don't have 300 supplies. We can go to here instantly. But yeah, we will need to spend some more money to get to the last locations because we don't have enough intel. Good, we got intel over here. We got Alien Alloys and Alarium over here and that's what we wanted to get initially. 
because that's what we're missing to upgrade our armor. Which should end our um, normal assault rifles. Which quite frankly should be the next thing that we're doing. I had high hopes for the resistance under your leadership, Commander. And you have outdone yourself. Well... Oh no, immunity to melee? Well, okay. We're luckily past that point where we're relying on the Templar to carry us through. He got the immunity to melee, that stinks a lot. Okay, he will improve. We're going to be shot down, like I mentioned it beforehand. And what else? Advent Stun Lancers have a chance to move after performing a melee attack. Well, in order to do that, uh, to give um, to give them a little bit of a burn, in order to do that, they would need to actually hit us once. So far, all they did is stand in cover, get blown away, and then get shot to smithereens. So that is okay. And it's on high alert. This here is unfortunate because the radius of their detection would be bigger not completely problematic but if we can avoid it i would prioritize that and soon we're going to see the next retaliation strike okay so what else do we want to do hmm black market 30 percent premium all black market costs reduced by 33 percent yeah let's take that one Good. Do we need more resistance contacts? Not yet. But we could get an additional resistance contact. Instant collection. That is good. Facility construction speed still is okay for now. We can get probably get rid of this next turn. And this year means that we're getting more out of all scan uh, re, uh, rewards that includes Illyrium and basically also Alloys and so on. So that's not too bad. Let's take that for now. Like I said, we don't have the killer resistance orders in this run. We just got around a thousand supplies, so we definitely have enough money to go around now. Good defense matrix, soon going to go online. We can upgrade it, that's good. Got enough power, so that's not the problem either. You've done a hell of a job keeping this ship together, Doctor. Let's see what else we can do for now. I mean we could build that war suit, but we're not having twenty alien alloys. Can go another experimental powered weapon. Oh, these are the stronger ones. Okay, that's exactly what we need. 100 supplies. Yes, please. Let's get a second one, just for good measure. These are the big guns. Good, we now got Solace and I would say we're going with soul fire because it's a strong single target to damage. Ignores cover, 100% hit. This will prove to be an important step forward. Trying to fish for kind of weapon enhancing uh, weapon enhancing breakthroughs. Unfortunately, that didn't work so far. I still want to finish all of the research before going into the shadow uh, shadow lab. So let's do the lost corpses real quick. That could uh, create a breakthrough. I'm still hoping for a breakthrough for plasma weapons. That way we're getting one more damage out of uh, them. Every single research that we're doing theoretically can trigger a breakthrough. 
with the laboratory the breakthrough chances are increased so it's not completely Strategic unlikely that low. that we're going to find something good and we got a lot of alloys and that is not needed a lot of alloys and a lot of elarium probably not enough alloys to upgrade the armor pretty sure it is not enough but let's see what else we can do so none of that really well the beam auto pistol could work why not it's a decent upgrade plasma rifles is certainly a great upgrade for our squad and the warden armor yeah we're definitely missing a lot there so how about we're getting plasma rifles yes please i think the rest is pretty much on in, in not interesting for us at this point good i saw Tygen muttering to himself in one of the corridors i'm not sure he even noticed it. we invested yeah. our stuff very well got weapon upgrades we're just requiring the uh the upgrades for armor now for our normal soldiers but we are okay Got intel over here, that would be eight days. Do we really want to spend eight days? Well, it said resources from scanning are doubled. So maybe that's a hundred intel. I would scan eight days for a hundred intel, but that might be a questionable decision. there is another reduction we're now pretty solidly down with the avatar project there's even more avatar project reduction and you know what we can do we can bring the pain to them let's start with creating hogbite and one random schmuck um, named Raul and we finally do have other soldiers that can help so we're negating the risk of a captured soldier and there's only a very low chance that someone's getting wounded this will get us to port three and then we can hopefully infiltrate her soon I still wanted to beat the Chosens, at least one or two of them. So gotta speed that up a bit. I mean, we were, I'm, I'm the first one to admit we were not the fastest with all of uh, the Covert Ops missions, right? Gonna do Fortress, because it's an absolute amazing ability. Immunity against everything. And there's the retaliation mission. Guys, we got only 10 enemies. Are you kidding me? It's never going to be only 10. We're definitely going to fight against the hunter. Who, by the way, is also immune to melee. And we don't have both of our psyops with us. We only have one psy operative with us. Speaking about which, whilst he's away... Let's take the last rookie and train them to become yet another Psy operative. Okay, good. That will bring us to the end of today's episode, guys. Chrysalids, oh, chrysalids on terror missions. <laughs> that's a special, that's a special kind of annoying. The positive aspects about sparks, however, is they are immune to poison. So chrysalids will hit them, but chrysalids will have no ability to overcome their armor. And since they usually hit for around kind of five to seven points of damage, if, if your mech has four points of armor, 
they give a damn about whether or not the chrysalid is attacking them. So we can take quite a few chrysalids and they are also pretty vulnerable against AoE attacks and we got quite a, uh, quite a lot of uh, those. So it's gonna be a fun mission. I can't promise that we're going to win it necessarily because once chrysalids start to attack um, civilians there is a bit of an uh, exponential growth uh, ongoing where all of the civilians automatically start to turn into chrysalids but that's the way of XCOM that's how it's always had been um, already back in 1992 in the UFO um, mission you didn't want to have um, zombies because they could automatically replicate and chrysalids are just not better they are the same anyways thank you for uh, watching and if you enjoy the content you know how it goes like and uh, comment down below see you in the next episode bye bye